so we're taught that if one person kills another person, that is murder. But if a government kills a hundred thousand persons, that is patriotism. And they'll say we're disturbing the peace, but there is no peace. What really bothers them is that we are disturbing the war. I start from the supposition that the world is topsy-turvy, that things are all wrong, that the wrong people are in jail and the wrong people are out of jail, that the wrong people are in power and the wrong people are out of power. I start from the supposition that we don't have to say too much about this because all we have to do is think about the state of the world today and realize that things are all upside down. History is important. If you don't know history, it's as if you were born yesterday. And if you were born yesterday, anybody up there in a position of power can tell you anything, and you have no way of checking up on it. It's exactly when you're in the midst of a war, or about to go into a war, that you need your freedom of speech. Lives are at stake. If you are put in fear of speaking out, then democracy has been severely crippled. When you think of, of people like Howard, you think of the person who really stands up to authority and understands radicalism in its, in its basic meaning, that is going to the root of problems and, and, and demanding that those problems be confronted. A life of political engagement is so much more interesting and so much more joyful and comradely than a life of private disengagement and private consumption. I don't believe it's possible to be neutral. The world is already moving in certain directions. And to be neutral, to be passive in a situation like that is to collaborate with whatever is going on. And I, as a teacher, do not want to be a collaborator with whatever is happening in the world. I want myself as a teacher, and I want you as students to intercede with whatever is happening in the world.